I ask that you please ignore the fact that I look disheveled, that I look like I'm falling apart, because I am. I am disheveled. I am falling apart. Because when I started this lost journey, I said, hey, you're going to have to give me some time. This is going to take me a while because I have a job. I have other requirements in life. And unfortunately, the second we went down that damn hatch, I can't stop thinking and watching this show because I don't need sleep. I need answers. Y'all, season four, season four was so good. Season four was easily the best season yet. I technically got six pages worth of notes, y'all. I don't know where to start. It all looks like gibberish at this point now. I'm, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. These lost videos are a mess. I think that this one's gonna be the worst of them all because we get so much damn information I, and it's all scattered brain. I don't know exactly where to, where to start. Normally I would just start at the beginning of the, the, ep, the, the season and work our way back, but at this point it's just it's too chaotic, there's too many questions, there's too much going on, I don't know what's going on. I feel like this show is making me feel so incredibly dumb because I feel like I'm supposed to comprehend more that's happening than it's actually happening and I'm just, I'm so stunned. Gods have answered my prayers. This season is only 14 episodes long and because of it, that's also why this season is so good. There's no filler. It, the pacing is smooth like butter. First and foremost, the format is still the same but it's also different. Instead of flashbacks, we now have flash forwards. So we see that certain people have made it off the island but we don't know necessarily how they got off the island and we, why Jack necessarily wants to go back. Hurley telling Claire that Charlie died, cried again, cried again. The amount of times that this show has made me cry is embarrassing. It's, it's absolutely embarrassing. We finally get help to arrive because Charlie sacrificed himself and was able to turn off the yellow light and they were able to get help but turns out the help that came is evil. In a sense they're working for Charles Whitmore which is Penny's father. Whitmore faked the oceanic plane. He faked the plane, y'all. What the hell? He faked the plane because he wants to exploit the island for the miracles that the island can conjure up. So in a sense, the supernatural things that happen on the island, how people can cure, how it can cure cancer and how it can um, make paralyzed people walk, um, they don't know the answers to that and they want to exploit that in hopes to find the people so that he can kill them all. So therefore, that he can get the island and that is, insane but so darn good in the real world kate's being on trial for her crimes that she committed before um she got on the plane and luckily it turns out looks like her you know being on the island did her some good because they end up not sentencing her due to the uh, the heroic stuff that she did and because jack testified in her will but why is Kate with Claire's baby like she was pretending to be the mother and they're all lying why the hell are they lying but you get a few answers and you get 15 more questions however let's talk about Kate because I think Kate's a very interesting character I really like Kate but I feel like the writers are doing one of my least favorite things that m most network television shows do and that is they use her for a love interest and I'm sorry but I know this show has like a love hexagon thing going on between Kate wanting to be with Sawyer or Kate with Jack or Sawyer with Juliet or Jack with Juliet or Juliet and Ben and just oh my god I couldn't give a fuck. I'm actually watching this show for the plot. Now Kate in a lot of the ways it's just being used as the center hub for it all is so annoying. It's so annoying like I really like Kate because I think eventually Lily is doing a great job in the role, but I don't like how the writers are treating Kate. Just this love triangle has overstayed its welcome. We're four seasons in and they still have not picked who Kate's gonna be with. And that, in my opinion, is just annoying as hell. Let's be honest, when it comes to love interest, all the Kate, the Sawyers, the Jacks, the Juliets, none of that matters. 
None of that matters because it's all about Desmond and Penny. Desmond and Penny are the true love interest on this show. That episode, The Constant, episode five, oh my God. God, was it perfection. That is riveting television. That is how you build something, plant seeds, and then watch it grow to the most amazing thing ever. I was shaking at that phone call. And that whole sequence, how he's like, I'm gonna call you eight years into the future on Christmas Eve, and I just need you to give me your number and you can't change it. That I, unreal. I, it was like my tears were frozen and my, my, the hair on my skin was risen. That was probably the best episode of Lost so far. Between that and, um, through the looking glass finale. Normalize liking villains, y'all. Because I don't know necessarily now if John Locke is a hero or a villain or if Ben is a hero or a villain, but how the writers of this show are able to make these characters so fascinating and yet so despicable at the same time. Like honestly, every single character on the show has annoyed the hell out of me at some point. But these two characters are just so captivating to watch. That scene where, you know, at, where Ben says, tells Alex and Danielle and Carl to go run off and then Carl and Danielle get shot. I'm a little upset about that because especially Danielle, I felt like we, sh we should have gotten a Danielle episode. But Ben accidentally gets Alex, his daughter, killed because he's, you know, being Ben and playing the field and always trying to conjure up a plan. And he says that, like, she means nothing to me. And they in thinking that they wouldn't kill her, but they do. Oh my God. So Hurley's seeing ghosts and talking to dead people. And he believes that they're all dead, which makes my theory about them all being dead still on the table. Why the hell is Jack's father on the island? Jack's father is dead. Also, we get the revelation that, you know, Jack and Claire are brothers and sisters. <laughs> Also, where the hell did Claire go? Because we also see in this season, Claire just drops the baby, drops Aaron and just runs off and that's it. We haven't seen anything of her. I have questions about Jacob. You don't bring in this invisible character and not do any damn thing with it, okay? So I, the, Jacob needs to be explained. Son and Jen, mwah, mwah. I love son. I just, I love son. And when Jen dies, oh my God, that actress. She was like, activate, let's go, let's, let's, get these people, waterworks, go. It was incredible. However, Desmond time traveling now definitely opens up the idea that time traveling will be a major factor. And I wonder if that is how that, that they're gonna go back to the island. So welcome back to the character board. We're at the character board. Let's talk about my favorite characters and let's go ahead and get started. I love Desmond. In fact, this season might have made Desmond now officially my favorite character on the show. Fantastic. I love, love Desmond. I still love John Locke. I don't know whether, if he's on the side of the good or the evil, but regardless, he's just a riveting character. Ben's also in my top. I can't help but like Ben because he's always plotting. You know, he's always one step ahead of the game. He is, and that into me, I just, I can't help but applaud. It's like, you're doing some despicable things, but you are so clever and smart with it that I just, I love you, I love you. Yeah, so Desmond, John Locke, Sun and Jen, Steel, Love Sun, uh, Ben, and Charlie. Charlie, yeah, those are probably my top five favorite characters on this show so far. Just, also, Jacob. I love that there's an invisible character on this show that might possibly be God, who knows. I love season four. I absolutely love season four of Lost. It was fantastic. It was gripping. It was just everything I wanted. This was easily the best season of Lost so far. As the score goes, I would give this season a five out of five. It was perfect. This was perfect television, y'all. I'd give this review a one out of five because I didn't know what the hell I was talking about and everything is so, out there and crazy, I don't know how to grasp any ideas uh, or what the, <laughs> what the hell is going on. But regardless, I love this show. Um, and so look out for season five because uh, I'm immediately starting it right now. Um, and until next time, I'm the Slasher Movie and you guys have just been slashed.